Hello, my darlings. Three days ago, one of my lovely artists, Tana Berchan, drew a Bakugo Katsuki fan art and uh, said, hey, use it for thumbnail. Uh, the problem was uh, that a very similar picture was obviously drawn by my other artist, TV Head. So I asked her, hey, can you change it into Denki, maybe? So she added, like, a few more details to make it look like Denki instead of Bakugo. And then I realized, oh, now I have to write a Denki Kaminari fanfiction. Here's a Denki Kaminari fanfiction. I hope you enjoyed just as much as I enjoyed writing it. This one, this one is gonna get, uh, horny? <laughs> Sorta? I don't know. That's gonna be your interpretation doing the thing. Anyways. Anyways, I have a Patreon and a merch store. It would be nice if you could check both of them out. Links are down in the description. But I would totally understand if you don't have any money to spare. It is completely fine, especially in times like these. So I would like to ask you to simply like and comment or dislike. Watch the video until the end. And I want you to subscribe to join my beautiful darling doll army. Now. Enjoy the show. Evenings at the UA dorms were usually the most quiet of times because everybody was studying. But today was different. Mineta and your boyfriend Denki were having a serious fight. But no one actually cared to ask them what the problem was. Including you. You tried to avoid the purple gremlin at all costs. And when Denki was with him, the result was usually him acting just like Mineta, but in a leather jacket. To this day, he kept it a secret where he actually gotten it, leading to Mina and Uraraka theorizing that maybe he made it himself. But that's just a theory. A jacket theory. However, because of the two boys constantly shouting like apes and marauding through the halls, no one got an ounce of peace. Of course, Bakugo could have done something, but he still wasn't back from his redo exercise of the provisional license exam. You were among the people who secretly hoped he would fail it just to see his ego shatter. But instead, his ego just got worse. Something about people not recognizing his talent and stuff. The tussle with Mineta lasted until very late in the noon and early night hours, until Saro had gotten enough and flat out threatened to call Aizawa, which the entire class saw as the equivalent of nuking a city. Ironically, about five minutes later was Todoroki's and Bakugo's return from their exam, leading to a collective groan from the entire class. But you were just glad it was over. Finally, you were able to leave your room and get something to drink. You shifted through the cabinets and the fridge. While your quirk was powerful, it was also somewhat of a disability. And gross. Your quirk was called Queen of the Butterflies, which was a mouthful. While it allowed you to acquire the abilities of certain insects, primarily butterflies, it also made any food that wasn't completely covered and or filled with sugar completely undigestible to you. And finally, you found your object of desire. A rare and expensive soda that Lunch Rush himself made in only a single family-owned factory. A fact you only knew because your dad worked in it. At first, you filled a glass with it and after it didn't fully satisfy you, you just opted to axe the entire bottle. Once it was empty, your body felt dizzy for a moment, as you felt the carbonated liquid release a giant belch. Your eyes began to water as you desperately dashed back to your room, trying to keep it in. Right when you reached the door, it came out. It hurt and stunk of strawberries. Kushima, who was at the time the only one in the common room, 
gave a complimentative shout before you entered your room with a deep blush. Right now you wanted nothing more than to die. A few more hours went into the rest of the day, and just when you finally had decided to go to sleep, you heard the buzzing of your phone. With a groan you unlocked it and were greeted with a dick pic. The accompanying text simply stated, Told you mine's bigger, Minetta. Your lower lip quivered, and your face heated up. And then, both the image and text were gone, followed by a voice message. Sorry, babe, wrong person, came Kaminari's voice. A disappointed sigh escaped you when you realized you haven't even looked who the person was to send it. What now? Were you supposed to be disappointed? Angry? Happy you got to see it in the first place? Another voice message plopped up. Eh, uh, you didn't save it, did you? You shook your head and then realized he wasn't there to see it. You typed a quick no, waited for the reply. His next voicemail said, Do you think I should send it to me, Nada? Once again you blushed. Why would I want my boyfriend sending a dick pic to a guy? A guy with a girlfriend, I might add. Following that, there was silence until you heard a knocking on your door. Yo, babe, it's me. You walked up to the door and before opening said, don't get any ideas, Denki. I don't want to see it. It's fine, he chuckled. Just feel like I need to explain this to you. Why was he sounding so cheerful? You let him in, after sighing out loud. He proceeded to go sit on your bed, but you grabbed the back of his head. Purse like you sit on the ground and apologize before being allowed to sit on any bed. After both of you got in position, it was finally time to hear him out. Kneeling at the front of your bed, he first apologized. <sighs> Mineta has this uncanny ability to get the worst aspects of me out. And it's just way too much fun hanging out with him. He began. Like... Didn't you ever have that? Where, like, you're around people and you just turn into someone else, but it's too much fun to hang out with them to just not be friends with them anymore. You nodded and crossed your legs. You always became like a gossipy valley girl when you were within your friend group, consisting of Mina, Momo and Koji, of all people. While Koji didn't say much, he was like the mascot of your little clique. And what was this all about? You asked while pointing at your phone. He bowed his head so deep it hit the floor. He said he will be a better lover than me because, you know, his is bigger than mine. You snorted and suddenly Kaminari's voice got soft. And it felt like a challenge, not to my manliness, but, you know, to my relationship with you. You tilted your head and let him finish. I mean, shouldn't a good boyfriend strive to be the best guy his girlfriend has ever seen? So, by implying his is bigger, he basically said that he would be a better lover than me, and I just couldn't accept that. Yes, we are friends, but that was even low for him. He paused for a minute, and just when you were about to open your mouth to say something, he continued. I know for him this was all a joke and it 
really only got serious for me and him in like the last 10 minutes of it all, but it got serious and I was mad. Please forgive me. After a quick sigh, you replied with, You don't have to be better than any guy I've ever met. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, I met All Might in a mall after he had just apprehended a thief, so I highly doubt you'll ever surpass him. You smiled. Not that I wouldn't like to see you try. In your head, you added, And fail to it. But this was a blunder I didn't expect from you. You looked away with an audible humph. Mostly so he couldn't see or smile. Because you realized you could milk this incident for at least a week. Maybe even a month. If we are to stay together, unless I ask you or tell you, no more dick pics. He sharply inhaled. Also... Tomorrow you go buy me that new keychain I liked so much. You glanced at him. He had a dumbfounded look on his face. You two were recently on a shopping date. You had squealed about anything that was even just a little bit cute, including a small heart-shaped keychain covered in glitter. But every time you had squealed at something and he asked you, Want me to buy it for ya? You simply declined. Keychain? He asked. <gasps> Did you seriously forget that? You gasped and then pouted. Okay, okay, I... I buy it. <clears throat> I will buy you the keychain. He pleaded. Good. You mumbled. And after that we see what happens next. Thinking you were done shooing him out, he stood up to leave. Wait. You growled after him. He spun around, a worried smile plastered across his face. You forgot to say goodnight, and I love you. You gave him another pout. This time, trying to make it look as innocent as possible. And he grinned from ear to ear. <laughs> Love ya, babe. Good night. When he turned again and began to twist the doorknob, you said more quiet, but still loud enough for him to hear. Also, I think yours is bigger. He didn't say anything and closed the door behind him. And then you heard him exclaim, Fuck yeah! in the hallway, followed by a, Shut the fuck up! from Bakugo.